Hi everyone, Mr. K at Beckman Catholic. It's Friday, July 31st. My apologies that the first video that got sent out about an hour ago, it sounds like it had to be some audio issues with the recording capability. So I'm gonna redo this video um, since it's a really important update that we're sharing today and hopefully the audio is coming through more clearly this time. So as we start, I'd ask you to join me in prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, you've been with us from the very beginning and you will be there at the very end. Looking back over our lives, we can see that you were with us even when we were unaware of your presence, guiding us and drawing us closer to you. Give us courage and confidence in our futures, believing that your hand is upon us every day, whether we are aware of it or not. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, the state's website for updates, coronavirus.iowa.gov. Continue to pray for those impacted by the pandemic. A couple of reminders. First off, e-registration is, is available for the next school year. We'd ask you to visit the website that's listed here on the update as well for instructions or refer to the emails that have been sent out earlier this week. Uh, please sign up for a registration time if you're coming in person on Tuesday, and that's the first step that's on the website, and that's from 1030 to 530. New families that are coming to Beckman Catholic with incoming 7th, 9th graders or at other grade levels. Um, if you're new, we invite you to come at 6 o'clock and we'll have a kickoff meeting in the auditorium, uh, followed by some food for you as well. The focus of today's update is on additional information on our reopening plans. Um, we have developed a multi-page document that's included uh, in the email today, uh, and this has been approved by the board and it's moving forward for the 2021 school year. So I'd ask you to read through the, all those pages. I'll go over some of the key items in today's update, but um, I will not go over everything that is in there. So before we start with that update, I just remind you that these are plans in progress and they are subject to change. We continue to get additional information uh, on a weekly basis or near daily basis um, that may require us to make additional changes or modifications to what we have. For example, in the last week, the CDC has come out with additional guidance. The Iowa Department of Education and Public Health have come out with additional guidance. The athletic associations have come out with, with guidance for fall as well. Um, and we again, we continue to receive additional updates as we go. So these plans are current as of today's update, but are still subject to additional changes before we start the school year. So there are some, some key items that I wanna go over today. The first one is the school schedule. So as part of that, the board has approved that our students will be attending school in person five days a week on our regular school schedule. So that's Mondays through Fridays. Uh, you are most likely aware that Western Dubuque's schedule to start the school year will be Mondays through Thursdays, and they will not be attending in person on Fridays. We met with Western Dubuque officials earlier this week um, and learned that they're intending to keep that schedule in place through the first trimester of the school year, which would be about mid-November. So what that means is from the beginning of the year until about mid-November, we will not have bus transportation from Western Dubuque on Fridays. Um, with that in mind, there were some families that indicated on the survey we did a couple weeks ago um, that they may have some issues with transportation on Fridays. So if you do fall into that situation where you need assistance with transportation, or we also had other families that expressed a willingness to help families who are in need of transportation help on those Fridays, we'd ask that both of those uh, groups would please fill out a Google form, and that Google form is listed here. Um, on, on the page. It's in the update today as well. Um, we would ask you to have that completed by Monday, August 10th. Again, if you will be in need of some help getting kids to school on Friday because of the lack of Western Dubuque busing, or you'd be willing to help a family that's in need, please fill out that form again by Monday, August 10th. Um, also, there's been some updates to the student and staff health screenings. Um, we will be asking you to do these at home before coming to school each day. In yesterday's uh, updates we received from the Department of Public Health and the Iowa Department of Education, uh, they did give us a new screening criteria for high risk and uh, low risk symptoms. So I'm gonna go over those just in a little bit. So if you have any high risk symptom or you have two or more low risk symptoms, you are asked to stay home and are advised to seek an evaluation with your healthcare provider. So high-risk symptoms, again, if you're exhibiting one of these, you're asked to stay home. That's a new cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, or a new loss of taste or smell. If you have two or more of the lower symptoms that are on your screen, fever, muscle body aches, fatigue, sore throat, 
runny nose, congestion, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, you would be asked to stay home and consult with your healthcare provider on next steps. Many of you, or we had a number of comments asked in, in the feedback we got on the survey about what happens if there's an exposure. So if we have a uh, learn of a positive case here at school, we'll work with the Office of Catholic Schools through the Archdiocese. We'd also work with the, uh, the Dubuque County Public Health Department, and we would follow the guidance that they would provide for us along with the guidance that was given yesterday by the State Department of Education and the Iowa Department of Public Health. The key to these situations would be is who has had close contact um, with a positive case. Close contact is currently being defined as being within six feet of a positive case for 15 or more minutes. Um, we would provide that information, maintaining confidentiality, um, and then between the school and public health, we would work with those who are potentially exposed. Um, that could lead to an up to 14 day quarantine for individuals, and these things would happen on a case by case basis. So in the document, there's a little bit more information I'd encourage you to read about that. Um, but please be aware that if you have a, an exposure to a case, it could be up to 14 days that you would be asked to stay at home. Uh, a couple other item, key items that are in today's, um, in the, the big return to learn plan that we're pre presenting and providing with you today. First off is physical distancing. We will work to do this to the greatest extent we can throughout the building. Uh, we will be working on this over the next couple of weeks. We have our return to learn group meeting next week in particular to go room by room, area by area to make these determinations to figure out how we can best implement distancing strategies. We do know that there will be circumstances and situations though where we're not going to be able to physically distance based on classroom enrollment numbers, classroom size, the um, furniture we have in classrooms, for, for example. And in those instances, the board did approve that mask or face shields, some type of face covering will be required to be worn when we can't physically distance in, a, in an area. So some of those uh, examples could be arriving or coming and leaving school. It could be moving between classrooms during the day. We know from Western Dubuque that they'll be requiring them on their buses. If you're riding a bus for us for an extracurricular activity, we'll be requiring them as well. Um, if you're coming to and from lunch or waiting to get lunch in the serving line, um, and in other situations, again, where, where that physical distancing isn't possible, we'll be requiring uh, students and staff to wear face masks or shields, again, some type of face covering. Um, we're going to work to the best extent that we can to make physical distancing happen, but again, it's not going to be possible all the time. Um, but we've also, as a result of this and the feedback we received on the survey we did after the initial letter went out last two weeks ago, um, we are going to allow for more face coverings in terms of masks. Um, we initially said that they had to be uniform color and, a sol and, and solid color. We've changed that instead to allow for individual designs and colors as long as they meet appropriateness in terms of what we look at in our dress code policies. So if there's a question about whether or not it's appropriate, don't wear it to school. Um, if, if there's a concern about it, that'd be something at the discretion of school staff. Um, but we're trying to make this a little wider because um, we know many of you have purchased masks already. We know many families have made masks um, and we want those to be able to be worn so that this is uh, as least inconvenient as possible. So speaking of um, other items in, what, that we have at school, mass is a central tenant to our Catholic faith. It's the perfect prayer. Um, we want to continue to have mass opportunities available for our students. We will be having mass at this point on a weekly basis, but in order to practice social distancing and physical distancing, we'll rotate classes who attend mass on a weekly basis. Our current plan at this point would be to have two grade levels attend per week, and then another two grade levels will attend the next week, and then another two grade levels will attend the third week and we'd have a three week rotation for that to happen. Also in the update today, there is some information about if we have to go to remote learning during the year, what that would look like. Our hope is that we don't have to go to that option, um, but we have listed some information about that. The item that's of, of more urgent importance would be that we have an at-home learning option that's also been approved by the board for families who would like to exercise that initially here for the first month of the school year. The expectation if you're doing learning from home would be that you participate in classes like you would here physically in the building. We will use Google Meets or Zoom to be able to do that with students and students would log into the to class using their Chromebook and then participate in class as they were um, using that either that Google Meets or Zoom software. Teachers would also then be asked to check in with those students at least on a weekly basis as well. 
you're interested in exercising that at-home option, we're asking you to enroll in that using the following link that's listed here on the website. Um, it was also, it's also listed in the, the forms as well. We would ask you that you complete this one per student um, as well. For each individual student that would be exercising this option, we'd ask you to fill out the form one at a time. Um, we're asking for that to be completed by three o'clock on Monday, August 10th. We will then contact families that have, have um, expressed the, the desire to exercise that option to make arrangements for material pickups before school begins. Uh, one other item I wanted to mention today is about immunizations. Um, many things at this time have been relaxed or waived or deadlines have been extended. One of those that has not been extended is immunizations for students. Um, so the state hasn't waived those requirements. Students do need to have those up to date in order to attend in person on the first day of school. So we included in today's update a chart with that information. Um, if you're not sure if your son or daughter or your child needs uh, up-to-date immunizations, I would encourage you to contact your healthcare provider. They should have that information and be able to assist you with that information as well. A few other items just to note today. First off, substitute teachers. We mentioned this in Monday's update as well. Um, we are always looking for substitute teachers, but um, in particular this year with the circumstances, we'd love to have more people on our list. If that's something of interest to you, the requirements or eligibility to receive substitute authorization I have changed to have at least associate's degree or 60 semester college hours. If you have more education than that, a bachelor's degree or higher, then you would, would be eligible as well. You also have to be over the age of 21. Um, you do need to take a course through the AEA. That course is listed or the information is listed here for keystoneaea.org. Um, you can go to that page and learn more information about the substitute authorization class and then the process of getting the licensure for that as well. A few other items, the Booster Club is uh, taking pizza orders through next Friday, August 7th. Uh, pizzas are $10 to $12 each. They'll be available for pickup on Sunday, September 13th. Um, the form is in, was included in today's update. You can contact Michelle Kloss or Cindy Raker with any questions. And last item, if you haven't picked up your bench warmer tickets for this year's raffle, we would ask for you to stop by the office and do that. Um, we appreciate your help with this fundraiser. And if you have any questions, please contact Christy Thier. That's the update for today. Again, um, thank you for your patience, your understanding, your flexibility. Um, there's likely more changes yet to come. We ask you to just to hang in there with us. Uh, if you have concerns or questions about um, our current plans, please feel free to contact us here in the office. We'd be happy to chat with you about those. Um, I also ask you to continue to pray um, for a successful start to the school year. Pray that um, individuals continue to remain healthy, um, that we start to see uh, a reduction in cases in our area, and, and pray for those who are in decision-making capabilities, not only here locally, but on our state and national levels as well. Again, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing many of you next week at registration.